Today, I'm announcing that the Liberal Party has reached an agreement with the new Democratic Party to deliver results for Canadians now. This supply and confidence agreement starts today and will be in place until the end of this Parliament in 2025. Canada has woken up to the axis of weasels. An NDP Liberal coalition has long been rumoured, but now is codified. I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Brian Lilly and Warren Kinsella. All right, Warren, the Liberal Party and Justin Trudeau's government has now added the NDP to the fold officially. So what's happened to the Liberal government that you used to work for and love? Well, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore, you know, and as I've just filed a column for the paper saying, you know, going back to Mr. Turner and Kretzia and Martin Dion, the, the old Liberal Party is gone. And this is, and it, but so too is the NDP. I think as of this morning, what we're seeing is the friendliest of friendly takeovers of the new Democratic Party of Canada. And Jagmeet Singh no longer matters. He has rendered Justin Trudeau, who was previously by the decision of the Canadian people, a minority prime minister, he has rendered him a majority prime minister until 2025. And I know they're allowed to do that. I think the point all of us need to make is they shouldn't do that. That is not the will of the Canadian people. And that's why I called it in the, the column, the axis of weasels. They look like a bunch of weasels. Canadians sent a minority parliament back, uh, Brian, did not give Justin Trudeau that majority he so coveted in the last election, but the NDP has been propping them up for years now. And now, as I said, this is simply codified. So how far to the left has have the Liberals tacked to uh, court the NDP in order to what we have heard the deal is to at least not have a government, uh, an election until 2025? Well, just to use one of the policy issues, and it's a long, detailed list of what the Liberals agreed to to get the NDP to support them, they have effectively adopted the, the NDP uh, platform as their own. Uh, they're going to increase taxes on Canada's big banks and insurance companies, and some people might say, yay, great. Well, no, because they're also going to make them pay a Canadian recovery dividend. So we're going to be pushing our tax rates up to American levels or higher, which, you know, uh, going back more than a century, back to Laurier and McDonald, Canadian governments kept our taxes just enough lower than the Americans so that we were more competitive, so that people would say, well, let's invest there, we can make more money. You know, Jean Chrétien lowered corporate taxes for years and drove up government revenue at the same time. He cut the taxes, but the government took in more money. It was great. We're going in the opposite direction. And on one issue, they want to do this national pharmacare plan, make sure everyone has access to prescription drugs. Some of the provinces, Quebec in particular, already has that, but they're going to take that away from all the provinces. And they're going to have a single buyer, a single purchaser for all the prescription drugs in Canada. What could possibly go wrong with that other than everything? It is extreme centralization, and it's going to start. He, he, Trudeau saying this is going to bring peace to Parliament. It's going to create war with the provinces. You know, Tr uh, Justin Trudeau often likes to sow those divisions, worn within our country. Take your pick of an issue, be it east-west relations, be it you know pipeline development, or even with the most recent issue with respect to mandates and and the trucker convoy this has been probably one of the most divisive times in our country that i certainly can remember and rather than bring down the temperature he often increases it but i i think this notion of bringing canada together is it, it, people aren't going to buy it particularly the premier uh, of quebec and the leader of the Bloc Québécois, Francois Blanchet, he's not going to have many positive things to say about this, I can imagine. Yeah, and, and what, so why is he doing it? You know, what are the possibilities? Is he afraid of the next Conservative leader? I don't think so. Um, you know, they're, they're competitive, but I don't think he was in danger of being defeated by that person, whoever they may be. Is it somebody in PMO having fun? That's possible. I think the real reason they've done this, the real reason he, Justin Trudeau, has done this is because he's leaving. 
He is leaving. He's looking for a legacy piece. He wants enough runway to do that. We've seen him do his little Instagram tour over in Europe in the past few days where nobody took him particularly seriously. He's desperate to have a legacy piece in the way that his predecessors did. He doesn't have one. His, his legacy is scandal. So I think he's looking for enough time to carve out, cobble together some kind of legacy and give his, his chosen successor, which increasingly looks like Christopher Freeland, uh, time to you know take over and present a fresh new face on the Liberal Party and so on. And but you know, I think to the point that you and Brian have just made, all this is going to do is make people angry because it's not necessary. They don't understand it at a time when you know we've got this terrible war in Ukraine and we're teetering on the brink of World War III, where you know the pandemic is is coming to an end, but people are still concerned about new variants and so on. With all of that stuff going on, once again, Justin Trudeau's only concerned about himself and his own welfare. And that is what is so wrong about this, is that it's just all about him. It's always just about him. So Canadians can expect higher taxes. And Brian, uh, you know, everybody likes free stuff, you know, free health care in this country. But those free things come with a big price tag. And it comes in the form of higher taxes and bigger spending. And with so high, such high inflation rates right now, Canadians are already stretched. Very little uh, can can be you know thrust upon our economy that we can really afford. This is not only unaffordable, but it's quite concerning. I think in the long term, in in sort of Can in the world of Canadian politics, and as we do look to a uh, a new conservative leader, the interim leader Candace Bergen uh, had some strong comments, uh, things that I think will resonate with Canadians. 82% of voters did not vote for a Liberal NDP government, in including millions of Liberal voters. These Canadians woke up this morning to the fact that they have been hoodwinked and they've been deceived by their Prime Minister. Now make no mistake, the NDP are in charge. What does this mean? Well, it means the decimation of Canadian oil and gas and LNG which we now more, we know this more than ever, that means that that is really a, a way to prop up Putin and Russia. It also means $214 billion, just that we know of, in new spending for Canadians. And that's who's going to be spending. That's who's going to be bearing the brunt of the new NDP Liberal government. All of which Canadians, for Canadians means more debt, more inflation, more jobs lost, more uncertainty, and frankly, more polarization. This is not a good day for Canadians. I, right now, the Conservative leadership is happening under all of the veil of everything that, that Warren has just uh, mentioned. So is that a calculus in Trudeau getting this deal done with uh, Jagmeet Singh? Is, is there real concern that if, for example, they pick Sheree, that it's, it spells potential electoral defeat. Let's peel back the curtain a little bit here. What's what's really at issue? I, I really don't think the conservative leadership is why they're doing it. I, I think it is because Justin Trudeau has long wanted to do a hostile takeover of the NDP, much like Kathleen Wynne in Ontario. She took what was a centrist party and took it to the far left, tried to outflank the NDP. Candace Bergen, by the way, warned the Canadian public about this in re reacting to Trudeau's announcement of this merger with the, the NDP said, look, it worked out really badly in Ontario. It's going to work out badly here. So he couldn't do the hostile takeover in the last two elections by running to the left of Jagmeet Singh. So now he's doing a, a merger of sorts, a, a coalition. I know they keep saying, well, it's not a coalition government. Fine. They don't have cabinet seats, but it's a coalition. They're doing this because Justin Trudeau is not a centrist. He's not a liberal. He is on the socialist side and wants to do it. So he wants to bring in higher spending. He was asked, well, will this affect Canada's fiscal stability? No, it's going to be great for our fiscal situation. You're promising two brand new social programs that are going to cost a ton, that when you centralize them will cost even more. Of course, spending is going to go up. Of course, taxes are going to have to go up. And Justin Trudeau likes that. He thinks it's a good idea. So does Jagmeet Singh. 
We'll see if the Canadian public agrees with that. If you're an old liberal, wake up, folks. This is not your father's liberal party. This is not Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin's liberal party. It's not even a liberal party anymore. It's a tax and spend new democratic party with Justin Trudeau at the helm. With tilting so far to the left, Warren, I, I want to talk about that notion of the days of the centrist Liberal Party, where both left and right felt comfortable voting for someone like a Jean Chrétien or even a, a Paul Martin. Those notions are gone with, with this deal. This is not uh, the, the middle of the road, let's all get, uh, you know, move forward together for Canada as, as a whole, as a collective, that's just completely gone. And I think of some of those cabinet ministers who I would say or would have been perceived as principled liberals and a very centrist. Um, where are they? Are they going to speak out? Are they going to make noise behind the scenes? Are they uh, uncomfortable with this? Or are they just too seized with the notion of power that they'll just go along where are those principled voices around that liberal table they're gone they've been driven out you know when justin trudeau came into the leadership of the liberal party of canada in 2013 he said i don't want any more hyphenated liberals well he has become the ultimate hyphenated liberal he's a new democrat liberal it's a new it's a new appellation <laughs> it's a new species in canadian politics and uh, except, as Brian pointed out, at the Ontario level, where it had disastrous results. Like, you know, I, I learned at Kretzian's knee, as you guys know, we were fiscally conservative and socially progressive. And that, you know, is popular with Canadians because most Canadians are like that. They know at the end of the day, like it's kitchen table economics. In order to have the good stuff like health care and support for people during a pandemic, you need to have some money in the bank. You need to have a balanced budget. You need to have a fiscal capacity to do that. Justin Trudeau was assisted by low interest rates during the pandemic. That was why he was able to do CERB and programs like that. Those rates are now rising because of inflation, which he's done precious little about. And so the fiscal capacity, without getting into the weeds here, of the government of Canada is going to be extremely constrained now by what these guys are doing. And as Brian says, and as you've said, I don't think Justin Trudeau gives a you know what about what that means for future generations. Like it is going to matter. We are not going to be able to have some of those social programs in the future because of what happened this morning. And it, like, it's a shameful moment. It's a dangerous moment for the country. Well, once that next federal election comes along, perhaps Canadians will have one trillion reasons to vote conservative because that's going to be our federal debt. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Log on to Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.